Sensory and motor, let's go into our tips then for anatomy. So, because I kind of just covered that. All right, any questions so far on nervous system or muscular system or anything so far? Please let me know with the question right now. I will have a look and see if there's anything. Um, just so they don't build up too much and there might be something you want to ask and I don't want you guys to forget. So I'll give you guys a second. I'll see if there's any questions that come through. Um, for the spot test, how long can we take to answer the question? Um, oh, how long was my one? I think mine was, yeah, um, an hour, um, 60 minutes. So it's not like... Um, like each question has a timer. It's just you have 60 minutes and you can choose to use that however, like in whichever way you would like. Um, if it's in person, same thing, but it, it doesn't mean, because mine was 60 minutes, doesn't mean yours will be 60 minutes. Um, you might have like 120 minutes or whatever. Um, but yeah, it's not like for one question, there's a timer for each. However, I do know, I didn't, as I said, I didn't have an at home online spot test I had to go in person but for my friends that did do online at home once they did a question they couldn't go back to it so yeah even though you don't have a timer limit um, you, you can't go back in some cases okay that may not be the case for you hopefully it's not but I know that's what um, some of my friends had had any other questions no all right, let's move on. Okay, so um, here are some tips for anatomy. Anatomy can be very difficult, especially since you're required to know the name, function, innovation. So what nerves connect to this part of the body and what nerves give it function and actually allow it to feel. For example, we have muscles on our hand, but obviously nerves have to be there. Nerve endings have to be there for me to feel different things. Um, and the direction of movement of every little thing. That's one thing that I certainly was shocked by when I got to anatomy and physiology. It's not just like, you know, oh, this is, I don't know, the femur, this is the humerus. It's like, okay, this is a femur, this is every single thing on the femur. And there's so much to remember. Um, so, so, so much. And I'm not saying that to scare you, I'm just saying that to prepare you because I definitely got a rude shock when I went there and I was like, whoa, every little part of the body I need to know. Um, so because it's very overwhelming in that sense, to help you keep on top of it and do well, here are my tips from someone that actually studied it. Study using photos of cadavers. I can't tell you this enough. Do not study using diagrams like I've been showing you, okay? Um, like this. I wouldn't study with something like this. Maybe in the beginning of your study and as you're starting to learn it, but try to find photos with real cadavers and real human specimens. I know it can be very uncomfortable and um, yeah, uncomfortable to look at. And if you're someone that doesn't want to look at that, um, as I said, talk, talk to your lecturer about that because they have to be accommodating to that. Um, and in your spot test, you'll see lots of photos of cadavers and real life specimens. So you will need to share that at some point. But if um, that doesn't apply to you, study using photos of real life cadavers. Because as I said, it's not all color coded, it's not clear, um, and a lot of the time it's not isolated. This is a really big thing. And I really wish I could show you photos of cadavers so I could explain what I mean, but I didn't want to shock anyone and also copyright issues. So what I mean is let's go to, for example, here. If you were asked what's this muscle in the stern and it's the sternocleidomastoid this is really pretty it's neat color coordinated if it was the neck there'd be so much going on you have to remember you're not just going to look at muscles you're going to see everything that's in the neck you're going to see veins arteries bone uh, muscle tendons everything and you've got to work out and it's not colored either you've got to work out what is what okay so you could easily think it's sternocleidomastoid and it's something else so train yourself to be able to detect it with, um, oh my gosh, now I have to, 
yeah, train yourself to be able to detect it with cadavers um, rather than uh, diagrams. Maybe, as I said, diagrams in the beginning, but cadavers, trust me, it will pay off. Um, the big benefit is if you study mostly using photos of cadavers, it is easy to apply that to a diagram rather than vice versa. So it's easy to go, okay, I know the cadavers, I know what it looks like in real life human specimens. Very easy to then look at a diagram and say, oh yeah, that's that, because it's so much more organized. It's difficult to do it the other way. Look at a diagram and then try to apply it to a cadaver. Um, yeah, so that's why also labs are really important to attend because very different to diagrams, okay? So yeah, that's something that I picked up along the way, but I wish I would have known that in the beginning um, because it's so helpful. YouTube is your best friend. Yes, um, I would suggest every week. I'm not saying lecturers are bad at doing the job. They're very good, but oftentimes because just of the sheer size of the cohort, they don't get to answer your individual questions and they might speed through certain topics. So I would suggest watching YouTube videos on certain parts of the body. Like if you're doing skeletal system, muscular system, YouTube helped me so much. I love crash course. I love osmosis is really, really solid. Um, it's used by a lot of med students. Osmosis is perfect for anatomy and physiology. Um, and so official amoeba sisters ken hub those are all other ones that i use institute of human anatomy as well um yeah and they have different system uh, different uh videos where they break down the different systems and show you and it's much more slow and um it just to me was a lot better so definitely use youtube um because it's much more simplified slow um, and just overall better. I would do it at the end of each week. Even if you think your lecture couldn't have explained it better, it can't help just to watch, you know, a five minute video on it just to consolidate your knowledge. The other thing is use 3D anatomy uh, models online. Um, I used Anatomy 3D Atlas and what it basically does is it will show you a 3D model of um, the body, sorry, 3D model of the body and you can turn your cursor and turn the body and you can also isolate parts of the body so right now I'm only looking at the skeletal system but I can add on top of the skeletal system the muscular system and look at all the different muscles and where they are over the body or I could remove the bones and only look at the muscles or I could look at only the nervous system I could look at only the ax axial skeleton or only the appendicular skeleton you get the point okay it's really good as um, kind of while you're still learning the content to visualize it and see where everything is um, yeah, but there are heaps of different ones apart from just three anatomy 3D atlas. Gosh, anatomy 3D atlas. Um, just find one that works. Hopefully your uni will give you one. Um, my uni gave me anatomy 3D atlas, which was very good, but maybe your uni won't. Hopefully it will. If they do give you one, definitely make use of it. Mnemonics. Okay. Mnemonics, um, will be a godsend in anatomy. Okay. Cause as I said, it's mostly memorization. It's not really application. It's mostly just what's this, what's this, what's this. Um, and there's heaps of memorization. So learning mnemonics can really help. Um, for example, Pestov is for the cranial bo uh, bones, parietal, ethmoid, sphenoid, temporal, occipital, frontal. Okay. Bone function, support movement, protection, mineral storage, and then some men prefer mini skirts but can't find enough skin. Vein, mm, please. Um, it's a bit of a weird one, but for the facial bones, okay. So there are many different ones. Um, and find one that works for you. I guarantee, no matter what you're studying, someone would have made a mnemonic for it. So just type in nervous system mnemonics and find mnemonics. Because as I said, in my exam, I literally sat there and some men prefer, and it was just so much um, help for me. So the weekly, uh, and so as I said, you'll have your continual um, examinations weekly. Those are good, but those also contribute to your grade. What I did every week is I printed out, um, or you could even do this on your computer and just annotate it, but for me, it was better to print it out. Printed out photos of cadaver specimens and wouldn't have anything but the photo, and I would try and, all right, let me try and annotate everything and say, okay, this is this, this is this part, this is this part and write out every week um, for the part I was studying and parts I've studied before, try to annotate what each part of the body in the image is. Um, and then I could see what I got wrong, what I got right, what I needed to focus on. Um, yeah, and also, yeah, what its structure is, what its innovation is, so what nerves um, 
of our part of it. It's shark shot, etc. Um, yeah. Another thing that really helps, um, something that I wish I did more of, was covering the lab material before you enter the lab. So as I said, you have your lab manual, right? It's a good idea to fill that out before you get into your lab. So when you get to your lab, it consolidates your learning and you're not trying to be one of those people that are, oh, okay, this is this, oh, okay, this is this. And you can say, all right, yeah, no, this is this, this isn't, okay, I can put it down and actually have a look, okay? It really helps, trust me. When you've done that before, you kind of already know the body parts. So when you get there, as I said, it's mostly just application based and revision. Whereas people who are trying to do it as the lecturer is speaking or as they're at the body part, it's so hectic and there's too much going on. Um, yeah, as I said, I admittedly didn't do this for every lab, but here's some interesting information. For the labs I did do this for, those are the areas I performed best in, in my spot tests. So that kind of shows that it works. For the labs that I came to already covering the content, um, those were the areas in the course that I did best in. So yeah, that, that kind of says something.